I'm going to introduce legislation, Jesse, to make uh, certain Mexican drug cartels, foreign terrorist organizations under US law and set the stage to use military force if necessary to protect America from being poisoned by things coming out of Mexico. So what would Lindsey Graham do? I would tell Mexican government, if you don't clean up your act, we're going to clean it up for you. And at the end there, Lindsey Graham is using fun little euphemisms. We're gonna clean up your act. He's talking about military strikes and perhaps a military invasion of Northern Mexico. Let's be very clear about that. Let's also be clear that that is what people like Lindsey Graham were calling for. Just when we knew that there were Americans who had been kidnapped in Mexico. Now that we tragically find out that two of those kidnapped Americans apparently were killed. The other two have been found, that's the good news, I guess, but two died and there are injuries for those who have been found. Uh, one can only imagine what they're going to be saying now. Um, but obviously this is a tragedy and it's a tragedy that they are going to look to exploit to rally their base. Again, to attack Mexico. I want you to think <laughs> about how Republicans would respond if the Mexican government was like, okay, so uh, these opioid manufacturers in America are producing so many pills that people are ODing. So we are going to bomb their headquarters. I don't care what little silly euphemism you use that we're taking care of a problem. It's war, that's actually what it is from this party that loves to pretend that they've turned anti-war or something. Look at them casually talking about attacking our neighbors, Amara, it's ridiculous. I mean, authoritarianism is gonna authoritarian. You know, like I think that again, you know, when you are a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And so when you believe that the way to deal with every single problem is by becoming muscular and militaristic um, and uh, marginalizing groups of people, that's what you're going to do. And you know, the Mexicans didn't say, "Oh, you're putting kids in cages. We're gonna invade," or "Oh, mm -hmm. you know, you, we're, we're you're detaining people, um, or you're human trafficking people, moving them from one state to another. We're going to invade." I mean, it's totally ridiculous. Um, yeah. And I I just think that you know, there is actually no thought here. This is all gut and blood politics on their part. Um, and that's the game that they're playing because they know that yeah. their base eats it up. But it's it's totally ridiculous and it's an absolute double standard. They shot down our drone. What should our answer be? Well, we should hold them accountable and say that if you ever get near another uh, US set flying in international waters, your airplane would be shot down. What would Ronald Reagan do right now? He would he would start shooting Russian planes down if they were threatening our assets. American foreign I kind of think at any point you were doing a what would Ronald Reagan do that you have lost your audience, like get out of here. He would what roll over in his grave and what just not do anything that would help the American people as far as I'm concerned. But anyways, Lindsey Graham's antics are not uh, unusual as they typically are par for the course. And it really comes following a Russian fighter jet forcing down a US Air Force drone over the Black Sea on Tuesday. And that's after damaging the propeller of the American MQ-9 Reaper drone, now, as according to the US military. And of course, Graham isn't picky with his military interventions as he also suggested using force against the cartels. I've had it. The four people that were kidnapped, two of them are killed, were from South Carolina. I've had it with the idea that America needs to sit on the sidelines and do nothing about uh, an invasion of this country of fentanyl being provided by drug cartels to the Mexican president. I would like to work with you to liberate the Mexican people from the scourge of drug cartels. I'd like to work with you to stop the flow of fentanyl into my country, our country, right. that's killing 70,000 of our citizens. And if you don't work with us, we're gonna do it by ourselves. Well, I'll tell you I really, for a moment, I thought he was going to say he wanted to liberate them from scurvy. Uh, but then again, that kind of tells you where my mind goes when I'm listening to Lindsey Graham, utter nonsense, Brett. Lindsey Graham is my favorite person in Congress. Why? Because he's so ridiculous. Yeah. Lindsey Graham is the ultimate fake it till you make it <laughs> senator. Because we know he's just kind of a little like, he's he's like hot pomade. It's like kind of a solid and he's kind of greasy and he's just kind of amorphous. 
and he's gonna let he's just there for appearances. Like Lindsey Graham is a total wuss bag, but how somehow Lindsey Graham is supposed to be this symbol of American fortitude? Well, Ron Reagan do. This is a guy who has been on all sides of every issue trying to be like, I think you're a punk, Donald Trump. And then Trump just whoops him. And he's like, oh, I won't get Vladimir Putin. I'm on show him what's what. And Putin's just like, are you kidding me? Like if I'm the Republicans, they, they're they struggling to maintain this war hawk attitude in the face of a lot of people in the populist wing saying, I don't wanna be involved in Russia. And they have a bunch of stupid reasons for that. But they also have reasons that resonate with people who are like, I can't like pay for my kids dental appointments. Why are we spending billions of dollars abroad in forever wars? And, in Iraq, why are we still authorizing the use of force there? Um, but but for Lindsey Graham to, he's he's not the Marlboro man. He's not this idea, and that's and he really typifies this weird dynamic of right wing self professed alpha dogs that don't pass the sniff test. You just kind of want to push them over. It's so weird to me that Lindsey Graham does this, and the it. The fact that Marco Rubio and company like Mitt Romney, they're all kind of pushing back against um, against the idea that you would have to vote for a war powers uh, authorization. It's it's that they want to use like these administrative ticky tack delay uh, tools at their disposal because they know that people don't want to go to war for no reason. It's harder and harder in this day and age to justify people going to war for no reason. And they wanted to to maintain this idea of a very powerful executive because a lot of the people on the right wing are kind of fashy. And they, they want to give as much power as possible to one person. These are the small government people, by the way. They wanted they want them not to pay taxes, they want you to pay taxes. They want no regulation so that they can Kill you with the food they produce without any regulation and blow up, um, you know, derail trains near your town. And they want to be able to send you to war and hook you into joining the military be, and, and tie some kind of student debt relief to that action because that's a, a way to pay for an, an expensive life that they've already made prohibitively expensive a bunch of different ways. This is exposing really the annoying part, the parts that I'll say are annoying about the Republican Party, but they're actually nefarious and evil. And they're talking out of two sides of their mouth and they pretend that they're patriots when really all they want to do is enrich themselves and their donors in the military industrial complex. And then um, this weird, and they want to appease the populist wing of their party because it's also a very jingoistic racist wing of their party by saying, "Oh, also the Mexicans. Mexicans, they do drugs and kill us, so we should kill them too. A drone over Russia is tied directly to drug cartels because I just want to spend money on the military. Thank you. My name's Lindsey Graham. Where's the check?